Welcome to Adipedia World Grade 10 Computer Science Video Lecture Series. I am Upeka Wendibona and from this episode we are going to talk about the iteration statements in C++. We rarely do something only once. Therefore, programming languages provide convenient ways of doing something several times. This is called repetitions, or else it is called, especially when you do something to a series of elements of a data structure, the iteration. So in the C++, there are two types of iteration statements. We commonly call it as loops. So there are two types, for loops and while loops. Take a look at this program. We defined a int variable i and initialized it with the value 0. And this is our while loop. In this while loop, it has a condition i lesser than 100. Now the value of the i is 0. Therefore, we can go inside of this while loop code block. Inside the code block, it has a cout statement. In this cout statement, it will print out the value of the i. This backslash means the tab space. And this is the power of function from the cmath library. To use this function, you need to include the cmath library. So this says i to the power of 2. In this program, what we are trying to do is calculate and print a table of squares starting from 0 to 99. So this while loop will be looped 100 times. Now the next statement. This statement will increment the value of the i. The value of the i is 0 and with this statement, the value of the i now becomes 1. As this is the final statement in the while loop code block, we have to check the condition again, i lesser than 100. Now the value of the i is 1 and 1 is lesser than 100. Therefore, we can again go inside of the while loop code block and repeat the same. After repeating and repeating so many times, there would be a time the value of the i becomes 100 with this statement. So after becoming 100, we have to check the condition again and this time i is not lesser than 100 because 100 is not lesser than 100. Therefore, now we have to go outside of this while loop code block. So it will end up the program. Let's try to execute this program and see whether our program is correct. So here it starts from the 0 and this is the squared column and this is the value of the i. When the value of the i becomes 1, the squared value is also 1. When the i is 2, the squared value is 4. When i is 3 and squared value is 9 and it goes the same. And let's see the last value. The value of the i is 99 and the squared value is 9801. So our program is correct. The logic of this program is pretty simple. We start with the value 0, we see if we reached 100 and if so we are finished. Otherwise we print the number and its square separated by a tab space and increase the number and try again. To do this clearly we need the first one a way to repeat some statement that means looping, a variable to keep track of how many times that we have been through the loop which we call a loop variable or control variable and here it is the int i. The next thing we need is an initializer for the loop variable, here it is the 0 and determination criterion, here that we want to go through the loop 100 times and something to do each time around the loop, that means the body of the loop. The language construct we used is called a while statement. Just following its distinguishing keyword while, it has a condition on top followed by its body. The loop body is a block delimited by curly braces that writes out a row of the table and increments the loop variable i. We start each pass through the loop by testing if i lesser than 100. If so, we are not yet finished and we can execute the loop body. If we have reached the end, that is if i is 100, we leave the while statement and execute what comes next. In this program, the end of the program is next, so we leave the program. The loop variable for a while statement must be defined and initialized 
outside that means before the while statement if we fail to define it the compiler will give us an error if we define it but fail to initialize it most compilers will warn us saying something like local variable i is not set basically writing a loop is pretty simple but you have to be careful when you write the condition okay now let's move on to the for loops iterating over a sequence of numbers is so common that c++ like most other programming languages has a special syntax for it a for statement is like a while statement except that the management of the control variable is concentrated at the top where it is easy to see and understand we have written the previous program with the for loop like this take a look at the parentheses area of the for loop it has three parts separated by two semicolons in the first part int i equals zero it is the for statement initializer the second part i lesser than 100 it is the for statement condition the third part plus plus i it is the for statement increment and the cout is what we want to do inside of the for loop code block same as the while loop code block when you execute the for loop this is how it goes it executes the first part int i equals zero and then goes to the second part i lesser than 100 as the value of the i is zero zero is lesser than 100 therefore you can go inside of the for loop code block so it will print out the c out and then goes to the increment part the third part plus plus i and again goes to the second part check the condition if it is true goes to the code block if it is not true then go outside of the code block so it is same like the while loop no big difference now you may be wonder whether you should use the for loop or the while loop using a for loop statement yields more easily understood and more maintainable code whenever a loop can be defined as a for statement with a simple initializer condition and increment operation use a while loop statement only when that's not the case now i'm going to tell you another important thing you should remember when using a for statement never modify the loop variable inside the body of a for statement that would violate every reader's reasonable assumptions about what a loop is doing take a look at the program in the top Anyone looking at this loop would reasonably assume that the body would be executed 100 times. However, it isn't. The plus plus i, the increment of the i in the body ensures that i is incremented twice each time around the loop so that we get an output only for the 50 even values of i. If we saw such code, we would assume it to be an error probably caused by a sloppy conversion from a while statement if you want to increment by 2 then you should go for the program at the bottom in the third part of the for loop parentheses it increments by 2 rather than 1 and that's all what we got here in this episode in this episode we go through two types of iterations by loops and for loops from the next episode we are going to talk about functions in C++ so stay tuned on with Edupedia World and thank you for watching.